All right, guys. So today I am getting a starter ready. I've actually got a double brew day coming up on Monday. So today is actually Christmas Day. So I thought I'd take you through the process I have. Um, I actually don't use DME. Um, I've gone to just basically making a mini, mini wart, basically. So I've got a, this is my recipe that I use. So it's six ounces of two row. Uh, 40 ounces of 163 degree, degree water puts me at about a 152. I do a 30 minute mash with that, boil for 10 minutes, and it cuts me right at 1040 for my wort OG. So, figure I'd take you through what I do. Uh, a lot of people will use uh, DME, and a lot of times I just don't have DME on hand. This is a little bit longer process. DME, you can skip the 30 minute mash, but it's definitely cheaper. Um, when I look at, you know, six ounces. You're not even a half a pound, so you're basically, you know, 50 cents, 75 cents for 66 ounces. So it's cheaper for me. I have two row on hand. This is what I use for my storage containers is basically, well, I have a pool, so it's, uh, they're chlorine, uh, five gallon buckets of chlorine tablets. So clean them out and they've got a nice locking top on them. So I can keep everybody out, that type of stuff, and put a little, little tape on top of them and keep what it is so I've got uh, this is all basically all my base malt so that's wheat there I have Pilsner and then I've got two row and then this guy here has got Golden Promise started using that since uh, I know uh, X12 and uh, uh, main brew guy they're all using that in their in 50 50 splits a lot of times in their uh, New England IPA so I'm keeping uh, that in here so it's basically where everything is and then I've got my my specialty malts up here so just the, the ones I use the majority of time. So just kind of what I go through. So figure I'd take you through the process for me. If it works for you, hopefully it would be something maybe be worthwhile for you. Uh, but again, it's, uh, I'll give you a quick look here. Again, it's six ounces of two row, 40 ounces of water to 163 degrees. We'll put you in about a 152. As I just leave it in 30 minute mash. It's basically brewing a bag is really what I'm doing. Uh, 10 minute boil just make sure everything's cleaned up and everything's pasteurized and then it'll put me just around that 1040 so a point or two above or below all right so uh, basically just kind of see where i'm at i'm actually doing a uh a double one today so um we'll uh we'll get you going through that as we get set to go all right i will check back with you guys in a few minutes all right so this is 12 ounces so i'm just going to put it through the grain mill uh, I got a bucket down below it. I'll take that back inside. I'll heat up some water. I'm basically doing a mini brew in a bag, basically, is all it is. I've got, uh, uh, it's just basically a uh, paint strainer is really what it is. I get them from Home Depot, so you can get two of them for, I don't know, maybe five, ten bucks. I don't even think they're that expensive, maybe five dollars. But you can get two of these. Um, I'll put it in a cooler, a little, so basically I'm doing basically a mini same thing you know if you first started with a with a cooler you know that type of thing for your mash ton i'm basically doing this with a smaller one so i put the the bag in there put the hot water in drop the grains in the bag mix it up put the top back on it let it sit for 30 minutes do a mash in there as i said 163 will put me right around that 152 range so kind of right in the middle of the conversion range so we'll get this thing started and get this rolling so we'll see how we do here so i just got a Drill from Harbor Freight with a zip tie on it. Oh, she wants to grab on me. All right, let her go. All right, so basically, I just use a tea kettle and bring the water up to 163 it's right there now i'll kick that off and then measure that water into my cooler so that is 12 ounces of the green in get her good stir in here so that's the paint strainer just into the cooler so that's 80 inch 80 ounces of water and 12 ounces of the malt at 163 degrees it went in so we'll mash in here and we'll get a uh, temperature of it 
should put me in that one mid 50s range here and we'll see how we end up all right so i mashed in give it a good stir and give it a check so we got 152.6 point it's fluctuating right between eight and six so i'll put the top on that let it sit for 30 minutes again i'm doing a double batch today but this is the same way to do a single batch just in a cooler like this just a small uh, water cooler you'd take to work or something like that maybe and uh, we'll let it mash in there for 30 minutes and then i'll throw it on the stove top give it a 10 minute boil and then we'll chill it down and then i'll put it in two containers and i'll show you what i do for my yeast uh, starters all right so from the mash i just basically pull the bag out uh, just let those grains just uh, drip out into that container put it in a pot boil for about 10 minutes five, 10 minutes, somewhere in that range. Just make sure everything's pasteurized, put a top on it. Uh, just make sure everything's good and clean and sanitized with the steam coming through it. I didn't think you'd, you guys needed to see that. And then split the two into two gallon jugs. You could do a growler, do the same thing. I just happened to have these two gallon jugs that were cleaned and ready to go. Put an airlock on them. I steal the, uh, or have stolen the idea from Denny Khan and Drew Beecham on the shake in a gallon jug or a growler instead of using the stir plate. So uh, if you haven't ever heard of that, they talk about it in their, um, I believe it's simple home brewing. Instead of using a stir plate, they just shake this for probably about two or three minutes straight and get oxygen in it and then put an airlock on it and dump your yeast into it. So I've got uh, the A38 juice on the left is for a brew day with exit 12. We're doing a uh, milkshake IPA on Monday. And then the Scottish Ale on the right, uh, Dave at Big Dog Brewing and I are doing a collab the same day, actually. So we're doing two collabs. I'm doing a double brew day. So the morning is going to be the Milkshake IPA. In the afternoon, I'm doing a Imperial Stout. That is the Black is Beautiful. We're actually doing uh, three batches, I guess is the best way of putting it. Dave is bringing his system. He's got an Amble Foundry. He's bringing his system over here. I've got a system that I'm going to go to with an eight gallon batch and a buddy of mine that is looking to get into all grains, never done it before. It's going to come over and kind of ask questions and learn. So it's kind of a, a learn to brew day for him. And I'm going to make an eight gallon batch and split it four gallons and four gallons. So I'm going to use the Scottish ale. I got a couple packets of SO4 for my buddy that's never done it before. He's going to bring a, a carboy and I'm going to give him the SO4 and split it so he's going to take the so4 i'm going to do the scottish ale and dave is using irish ale so it's the same grist uh, built on two systems i'm just going to go with a double batch on mine so i can split it between two guys and we'll have three separate beers with three yeasts and then we'll be able to get back together in a month or two and uh, see how those turn out so that's basically how i go through making a yeast starter so this a38 juice was probably good to go when i first got it it was October and we were, had a plan for a brew day in November, but we had to push back. And the Scottish Ale is actually a built up starter that I kept some um, in a ball, ball jar uh, from when Matt at Rec Brewing and I did our Scottish Wee Heavy. So I, I'm gonna build this back up again. So it'll give us a chance to do that. So this is kind of how I do yeast starters. So if you have any thoughts, comments, and go ahead and throw them in the bottom. But I thought I'd throw it out there and kind of how I go through it. If we don't have DME, this is a way to build a starter and still be able to do it at home. So, all right, guys. Hope you have a great day. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. So after two days, so this is Sunday after Christmas, uh, juice is just about finished up. And the Scottish Ale looks like it's pretty well done. It's got a nice little yeast cake on the bottom of them. Kind of crazy, the different colors. Uh, that is the same wort. Made it all together at one time. And that's the different color you get out of the two of them. So that's kind of crazy just to see the yeast with a nice little yeast cake on that. So tomorrow's a brew day, so the juice will be ready to go. I can probably pitch it right out of that. It'll be done by tomorrow. And the Scottish shell will be ready to go as well. I got a double brew day, so should be good to go. So, all right, guys. Well, that is my process for making yeast starters cheap and easy. Um, again, it's uh, very simple in terms of just using... Uh, six ounces of some type of pale pills, uh, 40 ounces of water, 163 degrees, brings you right around that 150 range, 152. 
uh, put you right in that 1040 range, you know, a couple points either way, depending on what you're using and uh, what kind of diastatic power the malt you have get out of it. But it's put you right in that mid range, what you're looking for. Pitch your yeast. I shake the, the wort before I pitch it. Shake it for probably about two, three minutes to get it nice and foamy, lots of oxygen in there, and then just let it sit and go. No stir plate needed or anything like that. So again, I got this from Drew Beecham and Kenny, Denny, Denny Kahn, excuse me. So that's their shaken, not stirred method, I believe is what they call it. So if I can find it, I will link it in the comments below. But hope everybody has a great day. Merry Christmas. Slancha.